Hi, I'm Alan Ross. We're here at the RE Plus Conference and Exposition. We're talking to thought leaders about the future of the energy economy. So join us and enjoy. My next guest is Yetkin Yildrim. Yetkin, thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. Did I pronounce your right, your last name right? Yes, Yetkin Yildrim. Okay. Well, I'm not going to do it again. I got it <laughs> once. Okay. And the name of your company is Terra Pave International. And I love the name. And you, I said something when I read your brochure. We're going to get into that. But before we talk about the company, I want to talk about the industry, the renewables industry really the whole power industry. We're, we're pushing decarbonization, we're pushing digitalization. There's so much change going on. The U Ukraine war, every government is spending on uh, getting rid of fossil fuels, and we're adding electrical vehicles, we're going to double the amount of power. There's nothing but problems. Tell me about the future of the industry. What do you think is going on? Based on what I see, we really need to be very wise because we are using the resources very uh, aggressively and we are causing a lot of pollution in the world. So what we need to do is that we really need to have a balance and we need to uh, use all the resources in a very wise way. We need to reduce the carbon footprint significantly. It can be done. It's possible. If we all work together, uh, that's something that we can do. It together and that needs to be done. Okay. Your background, you've got a PhD. What's your PhD in? Uh, my PhD is on construction materials. Okay. So I studied petroleum based products. You're my... part of the problem. <laughs> petroleum based products. You're part of the <laughs> You're part of the uh, but so is it, is it chemi chemistry or just yes, construction? construction materials. Okay, construction materials. Okay, how did you start the company that ends up doing what you do from, from Since this? I was working in the uh, asphalt materials, I knew what was the problems. And one of the biggest problems that we realized was the asphalt products with kerosene in it called MC30. And we are using a lot of this, uh, uh, this product all over the world and we try to find alternative materials which doesn't have VOC in them. At the same time, the carbon footprint is much lower and we achieved that at the University of Texas. And we develop new products with uh, water-based products which doesn't have any VOC in them. At the same time, carbon footprint is amazingly low compared to alternative asphalt and cement products. Just to give you an idea, for cement, carbon footprint is 100 kilogram per ton. For asphalt, it's around 20 kilogram per ton. For the products that we are producing, it is two kilogram per ton. Huge, two. yes. Wow. So when you did that, when you say producing, you're in production of those products today? Correct. Okay. So we have a startup company which is coming from the University of Texas at Austin. Okay. So it is established at UT and uh, we went through the incubator at the University of Texas. And right now we produce the material in Texas and sell pretty much all over the world. That was my next question is how do you get to scale? So can you produce it? Are you manufacturing in Austin? Yes. And you can produce at scale for the world? Yes, because we produce the concentrated material and after okay. we ship it and we it. expand the material. So one part that we produce in Austin becomes 20 parts in Africa. Okay, <laughs> I got it. That's excellent. That's smart. Yes. Very well done. So I want to go back to the industry again. With the renewables, you, you mentioned something about we've got to be more efficient. We've got to be smarter at all the materials that we use. And that's your science. That's what we're going to talk a little bit about. But as you, as you look at the industry as a whole right now, using your PhD knowledge, uh, what are some of the challenges other than the general ones? We know we've got to decarbonize. We know we've got, what are some of the challenges that this growing, probably too fast industry, right? It wasn't growing 20 years. We talked about it 20 years ago. We started solar, we started wind. Now it's scale, it's going to the next level. Especially the city of Austin, is one of the most solar powered cities I've ever been in. I mean, it's everywhere, right? Solar panels. What are some of the problems that you see the industries going through other than generalized inefficiency? 
And first of all, we are going through some challenging times you know, with the inflation, with the economic situation, and it's a challenge by itself. And what will happen in the next couple of years, you know, God knows. So it is uh, one big question in front of us. But other than that, change is difficult. It's not easy. Yeah. People like to do what they have been doing. And if you want to change something, they say, I mean, they come up with a lot of questions. That's what I saw throughout my experience with this uh, startup company, because what we are bringing is something totally new. So you need to come up with co totally new specifications. You need to come up with totally new rules, regulations, and they are not there when you make the change, and it takes time. So uh, that, those are some of the big challenges that I see in front of us. Change management has always been difficult, yes. and uh, people are, if they're, if they're set in their ways, one of the things that spurs change management is financial incentives, either lower costs than what you're doing, or a financial incentive where the government comes in and supports whatever. Um, how do you get a return on investment on your changes, your products? How can a company say, hey, financially, that's a good thing to do? Uh, you need to be financially efficient and you need to be profitable. That is the bottom line in this uh, uh, business. So um, what we are doing needs to meet environmental regulations and our goals at the same time. At the same time, it needs to be you need to meet the engineering requirements right. and at the same time it needs to be meaningful in terms of the profit. So if you can combine all of them, that's how you can achieve the success and that's uh, pretty much what we achieved in our company. How our long did it take to do that? Uh, we have been working on this for 10 years. Okay, <laughs> all right. It's called the decade of change, yes. right? That's good. The company today, um, I, I saw a product that you make, and, you, and what was the word we used about the soil emitting uh, uh, albedo? Albedo. 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 Okay. Explain albedo, because I honestly, when I saw the word, I thought it was a Spanish word, meaning I don't know what it means. <laughs> so explain what albedo means. So uh, when we talk about bifacial panels, we are talking about panels which produce ele electricity from both sides. Now, wait, I love that. One panel, electricity from both sides. So where's the sun coming from here? Yes, in the one side it's coming from sun. On the other side, it's a reflection comes from the ground. Okay. When we talk about the reflection from ground, that albedo number is the number that we are looking for. Okay. Higher the albedo, more energy that you can provide from the other side of the panel. With our product, we apply it on the ground and we can increase the albedo numbers in a way that you can increase the electricity production around 10 to 20 percent. Really? Yes. So d does the panel itself change? The panel has to, 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 to take it from both sides? Yes, bifacial panels are different than the uh, previous panels which produce electricity from on the one side. Right, right. With bifacial panels now we have glass on both sides and they can produce electricity from the both sides and their number, by, number of bifacial panels are increasing drastically. So the right bifacial now. panels are happening anyway and you're you're yes. just taking advantage of it to make them more efficient? Correct. I love that. Congratulations, Thank though. You. That's excellent. <laughs> uh, because those are the kinds of innovations that they don't, it doesn't take a lot to decide to put your product on the ground. I mean, what's the payoff is now you, you, you create more power exactly. from uh, the same space. That's just brilliant. That's really, really good. Thank you. So uh, acceptance in the marketplace, what have you seen? Uh, you're here at RE+. Plus. Uh, you, have you seen good acceptance? You say you're profitable, yes. so you must see that much acceptance. But uh, talk about the acceptance of the whole idea of the bifacial panels yes. and your product. They should go together. Everybody that makes bifacial panels should sell your product. Right. Right. Because that is a very uh, easy concept. Yeah, yeah. And we are not only increasing albedo number, on top of it we are preventing the dust issues. And this way we can keep the panels clean, because dust is a very big right, problem yeah, yeah, for the yeah. panels. Another thing is that we can prevent vegetation. So vegetation can be a very big uh, problem for the panels. Sometimes they grow so much they can you know, even create shadow on top of the oh, right, panels. Right, yeah. It can happen. And uh, other than that, uh, we can provide a very strong ground 
uh, for vehicles to move between the panels. So those are all the achievements that we can do with our product. So with the product, um, how is it applied? What is it, is it, a, is it end as a powder? Does it end as a, 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 li a liquid? How does it? It's a liquid material, okay. so it's a spray application. Okay. So you spray on, on top of the soil, compact it, and at the end you apply the albedo product. It's a liquid product as well, it's a spray application.